Hello, welcome to the Friday, May 6, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording today from Jacksonville, Florida, but actually teaching virtually in San Diego, California. Pratt was on duty again today, and uh, Pratt did write up an infection that led to Remco's rat. Now, it started all out with the usual Excel file. It was, in this case, password protected, with uh, the password being a five-digit number listed in the malicious emails. Then, of course, it tricked the user into enabling macros before downloading Remco's rat. One tool uh, that I've pointed out before, but really uh, one mention again that came in handy here for uh, Pratt was JA3 hashes. JA3, a tool developed by security engineers at uh, Salesforce, essentially uh, hashes the client hello packet that a client sends to a TLS server. It looks at all the different options being used and how they're being used. And in this particular case, the hash was specific to Remco's RAT. And emerging threats included that particular hash in its uh, signatures. So that's sort of how uh, Brad was pointed into the right direction to then identify uh, what's going on. And also he then found the particular key log file as usual. All the packet captures and such can be downloaded from links in Brad's diary. And if you actually are interested in hearing more from Brad, Brad will be speaking about uh, some of these pack analysis techniques at our uh, SANS Fire Conference as part of our evening talks. And well, having a password protected Excel spreadsheet causing mayhem uh, does sort of fit its uh, password day after all. And uh, well, as uh, Brian Krebs actually noted in Twitter, it should really be enable a two factor authentication a day, not uh, come up with stronger passwords. Now, along those lines, uh, Microsoft, Apple, and Google today announced that uh, they will uh, support upcoming FIDO Alliance standards. And what's really so great about it is that this is really all about eliminating passwords all together. Now, uh, I've talked about uh, FIDO standards uh, before, but what it's really about is to use various hardware authenticators like you often have built in, in particular into mobile devices these days in order to authenticate to various websites in a secure and actually also privacy preserving way. So it's not that you're going to send your fingerprints or uh, face information all over the place here. You're just going to use your biometrics if you choose to use biometrics to unlock an enclave that then maintains unique key pairs to log into different websites. And by this being a standard, this makes it a lot easier to develop a respective hardware, but also for web applications to take advantage of these technologies, given that you only have to hopefully implement it once and not very worry too much about the different flavors that different vendors may come up with. And while you may choose to purchase specific hardware for this, like various USB tokens and such, the big selling point to the end user is that you don't necessarily have to, that it's possible that your existing device, your cell phone, your Windows computer cable of Windows Hello and such, is already able uh, to act as an authenticator. The three companies agreed to implement these standards early next year, but of course, some of uh, this is already available in current versions of operating systems and hardware. And I mentioned uh, Heroku yesterday and uh, noticed how the Salesforce uh, company wasn't really all that forthcoming in what exactly happened to them and how GitHub credentials were leaked. Well, we now have an update here and it states here that because they value transparency, they're now telling us that April 7th, so about a month ago, a threat actor obtained access to a Heroku database and downloaded stored customer GitHub integration OAuth tokens. 
Heroku did not notice uh, this particular activity only after a Salesforce was notified by GitHub on April 13th that uh, basically GitHub saw something odd happening is they started to then investigate and figure out eventually what apparently happened. In addition to the OAuth token, the attacker also got away with stealing a customer's user's IDs and salted and hashed passwords. I'll link to Heroku's status page in case there are any additional updates after I'm recording this. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday.